There are now more than one million confirmed cases of COVID-19 worldwide. More than 50,000 people have died. Australia has more than 5,000 confirmed cases. A man in his 80s has died overnight in Victoria, taking the national toll to 25. Two of those fatalities are linked to the Ruby Princess cruise ship, which remains off New South Wales. It's one of 21 cruise ships being monitored by Border Force, with officials refusing to allow them to disembark. Two cruise ships have docked in Florida with Australians on board. The Zandam and Rotterdam are carrying 130 Australians who will now be flown to the US West Coast before coming home. In the United States, a record 6.6 million people have now filed for unemployment benefits, doubling the previous week's high. The US has more than 230,000 infections and more than 5,000 deaths. In Europe, Spain has recorded one of the highest number of coronavirus deaths in a single day, 950, while the UK had 561 fatalities. Italy's death toll is close to 14,000. Well, as I mentioned, there has been another coronavirus death in Victoria. Our reporter Stephanie Ferrier joins us now from Melbourne with more. Stephanie, just take us through what the latest situation is in that state. Yes, at the moment, sadly, Brett Sutton, our Chief Medical Officer, has revealed that a seventh Victorian has died from coronavirus. This is a man who was in his 80s, who was in intensive care in hospital. Now, this follows the death of two women yesterday. One was in her 60s, a cancer patient at the Alfred Hospital, as well as another woman in her 70s in another Melbourne hospital. So that is now seven deaths. We've also heard from Brett Sutton that our case number is up to 1,085. That's 49 more than at the same time yesterday. What else has the Chief Health Officer had to say about people following the current restrictions? Yes, well, he's saying that he really wants to make sure that people don't look for loopholes in these new restrictions. Uh, he's saying don't go out golfing, don't go out fishing. It's now time to simply stay at home as much as possible unless you absolutely have to for work, for caring for medical or for getting urgent supplies like food. So other than that, people really should stay at home. Now, he said that what they're really concerned about is the increase in community transmissions or cases where we simply don't know how those people have been infected. That has risen to 62 today. And he said that only a few days ago, it was around 30. So in terms of the overall numbers, he has seen a doubling of the numbers that was happening every three to four days. It's now happening every seven days. So he says that is hardening, but there still needs to be a lot of work to be done to make sure that we particularly keep down those community transmissions. That's Stephanie Ferrier in Melbourne. Let's go now to New South Wales and reporter Antoinette Collins joins us from Sydney. Antoinette, what is the latest situation with the cruise ships in Sydney? Well, Kirsten, again, issues around the Ruby Princess dominated the Premier's press conference here in Sydney this morning. Uh, we had eight cruise ships in Sydney yesterday off the coast of New South Wales. Two of those have now left. Another five, we've been told, uh, will come into Sydney to refuel and restock, and they will be departing uh, by Sunday uh, with their crews returning back to where their port of call is. Uh, the one remaining ship is, of course, the Ruby Princess, and result Results of testing uh, carried out by Border Force and Aspen Medical who are conducting coronavirus tests on board the ship there will likely come back later this morning. So we'll get an idea of how many more crew might have contracted the virus. Uh, but Premier Gladys Berejiklian was under fire again this morning about how the Ruby Princess was able to allow its passengers to disembark. Um, 340 cases in New South Wales, one-fifth of the cases in this state have been connected with that cruise ship. Uh, she's charged her police commissioner, Mick Fuller, to fully investigate the matter, but says she doesn't want to play a blame game. I've said from day one that um, 
every single authority needed to step up and in hindsight everybody could have done better in relation to that matter but I've asked the police commissioner to investigate the matter. I believe everybody deserves to have answers in relation to that and the best advice I've received that our authorities in New South Wales followed all the existing protocols uh, but I have asked the commissioner to look at those matters and provide me uh, with his report. And numbers of new cases in New South Wales appear to be stabilising. That's right, Kirsten. Today, in the past 24 hours, we've seen the number of new cases of coronavirus in the state uh, fall to 91. Now, that's the lowest number we've seen in that 24-hour period over the past few weeks. Brings the total number of cases in New South Wales to 2,389. Now, the main concern by health authorities here is, of course, those cases where contact is unknown and it's community community related contact at the moment there are 336 cases where that contact point is unknown and health authorities are really urging people across the state ahead of the Easter holidays to really stay at home maintain vigilance keep that social distancing happening uh, to really try and manage the spread of COVID-19 throughout the community. Antoinette Collins in Sydney thank you. More than 100 Australians who have been stranded on cruise ships off the United States will soon be on their way home. The Zandam and Rotterdam have docked in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. From there, Australian passengers will begin their trip home. Political reporter Stephanie Boris joins us now from Canberra. Stephanie, what can you tell us about the Australians on board these two ships? There's about 130 Australians on these two ships that have been waiting off the coast of the US due to coronavirus. Obviously, there has been great concern about what uh, will happen to these Australians. In fact, with the Zamdam ship, it uh, couldn't even dock anywhere in South America. It was turned away from a number of ports. So now, as we know, Florida has accepted these two ships to dock. The Australians will be taken off the ships. They'll be given health checks. If they clear those health checks, they then will be flown to the west coast of the US and then flown back to Australia. The Foreign Affairs Minister Maurice Payne expects that they will be back in Australia by the weekend. Of course, then they will have to go into self-quarantining for 14 days. They'll be placed in a, in a hotel and obviously this is to ensure that the spread of coronavirus is curbed here in our nation. There are many more Australians still stranded overseas in various locations. What advice is being issued to them? So Australians overseas are being told to ensure that they've been in contact with the DFAT hotline or, of course, the local embassy in the country they're in. There has been a number of problems with Australians getting home. That is because a number of commercial flights have been cancelled and also we've seen a number of movement restrictions within nations as well, making it hard for Aussies to get from one place to another and even to manage to get to an airport. So over the weekend, we saw a charter flight leave Peru and bring Australia home. Another one from Uruguay is on its way home now as well. The federal government is in talks with uh, Qantas about getting another flight in and out of Peru. And the Prime Minister this morning also has made it clear that any Australians that left here after the travel uh, advice was lifted to that level four of do not travel overseas, they won't be high on the priority list of officials in getting Australians home. Now, the Prime Minister will hold another National Cabinet meeting this morning. What is on the agenda today? One of the main points that will be discussed today is around commercial landlords. Now, we have a number of small businesses that can't pay their rent, but then the question is, what happens to those that own those properties, those commercial landlords? There are suggestions about whether the commercial landlords, in fact, should get that job keeper payment as well. This will be discussed at great length today. Also, there are still questions around uh, what happens to the tenants in apartments and homes as well. This is a little bit of a trickier area to navigate because the states and territories all have different rules here. But the Prime Minister made a very passionate plea yesterday to um, those that own homes and apartments that are renting them out, asking them to sit down with their tenants to have a conversation around what arrangements could be made to ensure that people do remain in those homes because it's unlikely that you're going to be able to find new tenants in this day and age. Now also on the agenda today will be discussions around childcare and 
ensuring that uh, any red tape, there's none of that over the next few months because as we're very well aware, the childcare sector is doing it tough at the moment. And in terms of further social restriction measures being put in place, they are not on the agenda for today as health authorities believe what has already been introduced is enough for now. OK, Stephanie Boris updating us from Canberra. And police have been stopping buses and checking if passengers have permits as they ramp up checks along the Queensland-New South Wales border. Cathy Border joins us now from Griffith Street in Coolangatta. Good morning to you, Cathy. Even public buses are being stopped at the checkpoint. That's right, Kirsten. This is the third checkpoint. It was set up at midnight on the Queensland New South Wales border here at Coolangatta. And yes, if you don't have a permit, you don't get through to Queensland, basically is the message from the Premier, Anastasia Palaszczuk. But we've seen people with permits being turned away this morning as well. Police not satisfied with the reasons they're giving for why they need to enter the state. And yes, public buses have been stopped. Police are going on board and checking each passenger for their reason for coming into the state. We saw a tradie ejected from one bus. He had a T-shirt that had plaster and paint all over it. But because he didn't have a permit, police said, no way, no entry. I spoke to a couple. He was a youth worker who had formal identification that that was his job. And his partner works in a pharmacy just over the border here. She was in her uniform. They were turned away because they didn't have a permit. So Kirsten, police are really ramping measures up here on the border today. Cathy, has anyone been fined yet? They haven't. The fines are hefty, $1,300. But the police said yesterday they're loath to actually enforce it because they're very mindful that a lot of people have lost their jobs uh, in, in a desperate way already and they don't want to add to people's angst. But they're hoping by ramping things up, people will get the message. You need to have a very valid reason for crossing into Queensland and you will be turned away. No ifs, no buts if you don't have a good reason. Of course, truckies are exempt carrying in freight, but there are certainly stricter measures today, Kirsten. OK, Cathy Border in Coolangatta. Turning overseas now, and in the United States, another 6.6 .6 million people have filed for unemployment benefits as the economy goes into deep freeze to try to slow the spread of the coronavirus. North America correspondent James Glenday has more from Washington. There are some, some economists who expect that as many as 20 million Americans will be out of work by June or July and that would be as bad as things have been since the Great uh, Depression. The speed and scale of this is unprecedented. 6.6 uh, .6 million people out of work last week, uh, some 3.3 million the week before and to give you some context we've got a graphic which shows how the current situation compares with the global financial crisis in 2008 and uh, as you can probably see it doesn't really compare at all what's happening right now is quite literally off the charts uh, at last check there were about 220 thousand hundred thousand 220 hundred thousand confirmed coronavirus cases in the United States more than 5,000 deaths and uh, the Pentagon has confirmed it's trying to provide as many as a hundred thousand body bags for potential civilian use because a huge number of local officials are worried that the death toll is going to soar around the nation in the coming weeks Spain's coronavirus death toll has reached more than 10,000 with over 900 new deaths in the past day. Spain is the second worst affected country after Italy in terms of deaths. Europe correspondent Samantha Hawley reports. Worse, I think, than that is over six days in Spain, uh, the death toll has been on a daily basis in the 800s or over 800 and now at this peak of 950. Also in Spain, 900,000 people have now lost their jobs. So it just can't uh, get any worse, I don't think, in Spain. Your heart really goes out to all the Spanish people at the moment. But... You also then need to look to Italy and what's happening in Italy because Italy is just a bit further ahead than Spain. And what we're now seeing in Italy, a very high death toll again today at 760 deaths, so still very high. But what they're really looking at now is the infection rate. And for the past four days, the infection rate in Italy has been 
in the 4,000s. So around 4,000 more people have been infected on each of those four days. That is a plateau. And that's what health officials say they've been looking for. They say that means the lockdown measures are now working and that they do then expect that that death toll will begin to fall. So that is actually even though it sounds like bad news, and of course it is bad news, there's some glimmer of hope within those figures. Now, if you then come here to the United Kingdom, what we've seen again today here is a death toll in the 500s, 569, not a good figure, of course, but also a concerning figure, I think, for the authorities here is that the infection rate is doubling every three to four days. Now, that is what they don't want to see, of course. So the uh, health secretary today, Matt Hancock, has announced a pretty ambitious, I think, uh, measure by the British government to bring in 100,000 tests per day by the end of April. Now, to put that into context, they're currently testing here in the UK 10,000 people a day. So an incredible jump in the number of tests that they want to do by the end of April. And of course, the message has been test, 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 isolate, and then save lives. So the testing is key and the UK government is promising that it will really boost those figures soon.